Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have yet another video for you showing you how to migrate from legacy databases to more modern database solutions like Snowflake. In this case, we're gonna be looking at how you can go and extract your data from Microsoft SQL Server, infer all the scheme information, all the structure of that data, and then one-to-one -one copy it over into a Snowflake data warehouse uh, using Airflow. So we're using Airflow as your orchestration engine and moving data from Microsoft SQL Server to Snowflake with a one-to-one -one replication strategy. Um, so hopefully this helps anyone that's trying to get off Microsoft SQL Server um, to get off of it and get to any other kind of data warehouse. Uh, you can swap out Snowflake for really any other, you know, kind of BigQuery, Redshift. It'll still work the same, uh, just slightly different location and maybe some syntax changes related in SQL. Um, so if you like these videos, please toss me a like, subscribe, helps me out immensely. But without further ado, let's get into it and start building our data pipeline. And so the first thing we're gonna do here is just create a fresh environment for us to use. So here we're just going to CD into desktop, data guy repos, and make directory SQL server migration. And then we're gonna CD into there and then run astro dev init. And what this will do is create a just blank folder structure for Airflow that we can use. Then we'll open up this folder and find it real quick. So go scroll through my endless amounts of screenshots. Really got to clean this up. Um, but here we go, data guy repos, SQL server migration, open this up, zoom in a little more so you guys can see. Um, and you'll see we just have a pretty standard Airflow layout. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is build out our requirements folder. Um, so effectively, this is just, you know, if you're pip installing in your environment, this is the same thing. Um, so you just take these four packages and you're going to add them either to your requirements folder or you can pip install them if you are using that method for actually installing environments in your Airflow environment, um, Python. Python packages in your Airflow environment. Sorry, I misspoke there. Um, so once you have your requirements text, build it out. So you just need pandas for data manipulation, SQL connector, Snowflake connector for Python and Snowflake connector for SQL Alchemy, and both for interacting with Snowflake. And then PyODBC is actually the driver we're gonna be using to connect into that Microsoft SQL server and extract information out of it. And the reason I'm using the ODBC drivers here rather than the official Microsoft SQL server uh, environment or it operator is because that operator doesn't really work well. Um, I found in my experience, it just straight up doesn't let work. Um, and so installing the PyODBC drivers and using those within a Python task has proven to be a much more reliable way of connecting to Microsoft SQL servers, no matter where they live. So then the next thing we're gonna do is go and create our DAG. So SQL server.py. And then we will start importing all of our different packages and requirements. So here, we're going to first import the Airflow decorators for DAG and task. So using the latest and greatest in Airflow DAG and task definition, ODBC hook for initializing a ODBC hook. And this is how we're gonna be executing SQL queries within our Microsoft SQL Server database to actually extract data out of it. Then we also have the Snowflake hook for, you guessed it, interacting with and executing queries within Snowflake. We also have the Airflow variables models. So we're gonna use this for storing some data um, and just setting values that'll be used across the DAG. Uh, and then also a SQL Alchemy for creating an engine and writing text in. And this is gonna make it easier for us to interact with that Snowflake environment uh, in a more structured way. Then we're also going to import date time for effective non-corrupted date time uh, implementation. Pandas for data frame creation and manipulation, classic Python data manipulation library and then hashlib for generating hashes um, and json for extract for basically using apis taking information from json converting it into you know plain text and we're using this for passing data between a lot of different operations here um, so those are all the different packages and you know python uh, requirements we'll need so now we can start actually building our deck so the first thing we're gonna to do to start building our DAG um, is just set a couple of variables that we're gonna need. Um, these are just going to be whatever your Microsoft SQL schema is, um, and also the incremental columns. You know, hey, this is the last time, so every time something gets updated, whatever column that is being updated in, you know, so understanding, hey, last updated at, that's the column you're gonna to wanna to put here. So you can track, hey, anything that has been generated after this point, we wanna migrate over. Then we are also going to write a little bit of code to 
only migrate over updated records. So you only really need to add this piece if you want to have an, a migration in, in, you know, going on over time, right? So this is a migration where, hey, this will keep you know, running daily and migrate any data that arrived in Microsoft SQL Server since the last time this was updated and send it over into Snowflake. All right, and so really, you know, this is a little bit of complexity here. Uh, you don't need to do this. This is, again, only for that specific use case, but I thought it was relevant and interesting where you're basically just looking at, hey, any columns that have been updated since this was last run, send those over. Then, next thing we're gonna do is start writing our actual DAG definition body. Um, and so here, what we're gonna do is just pretty standard DAG definition, extended Microsoft SQL to Snowflake. And then within the DAG, we're going to start actually defining our different tasks. And so the first task we're gonna do is basically using this ODBC hook to extract a list of all the table names within a given schema. So this migration is designed to capture all the tables that are given within a schema um, and then migrate all of those tables so you don't have to go table by table. So here what we're doing is going to, from the schema, uh, Microsoft SQL schema in this case DBO, and any base tables, and if you use different table types, you can change this as well, extract those, put them into a list and then return them as a list for downstream functions to use. Um, then what we have next task after that is also running get last loaded at. So this is a task that's going to reach into Snowflake and check when was the last load done. So we know later to only extract the data from Microsoft SQL Server that had arrived since the last load into our Snowflake data or into our Snowflake table. Again, because you know we're structuring this as if it was something that was running, ongoing, because you know, you're never gonna be able to do, or it's more difficult to do a clean immediate cutover than kind of having it happen incrementally. So any data that might still be being sent to Microsoft SQL Server can get extracted as you work off turning off all those different data sources. So after we've determined the last time data was uploaded into Snowflake, we've gotten a list of all the tables that we want to actually upgrade or, up, or migrate over we're now going to write a task that's going to extract the incremental data generated since that last update. And here, we're again initializing an ODBC hook here um, to create a connection into Microsoft SQL Server. And then from there, we're executing the SQL statement where we are using that incremental column we set earlier to select all from all the tables within those, you know, within that schema, get every piece of data that was generated after that incremental column date and order it by the incremental column. So, you know, a list of data, basically in, in order of when it was generated, right? And then also, let me add this here so we get rid of that red icon. We're also going to then turn this into a pandas data frame. If this is empty, if no data has arrived since the last update, cool, we're just gonna cancel the rest of the DAG. Otherwise, we're gonna return the table name, the data, the columns, and the data types that were extracted from a particular table. Um, and we'll expand this later to go through all the different tables within this table list using the dot expand method. So now the next task we have is a pretty monumental one um, because it's going to be loading it into Snowflake. So there's a lot of logic baked into this task and we'll take it slow and explain it, all right? So first thing that's happening is we're you know, initializing the load in Snowflake. So table name, payload, table name, and this is just a dictionary of the table names that we're going to be loading into Snowflake. If there's no new data, send a message telling us there's no new data to be loaded. Otherwise, read that JSON, uh, get the data that was just collected in the previous task, compute the low level, row level hash, and this is going to make sure, hey, there's no duplicate data, there's no data that already exists within our environment, we're not gonna copy it in. Then we're going to create data type maps. So you need to map the type of data you're extracting from within SQL Server to the corresponding type within Snowflake. So int64 turns into number, float64 turns into float, object turns into text, bool turns into boolean, date time 64 turns into timestamp. And you can look up all the corresponding uh, object kind of correlation if you don't, if these, you know, it doesn't include one of these examples here. Then what we're gonna do is create column definitions. So here we're going to be getting the payload of the different data types, creating columns from the tech columns that are you know, used within SQL Server. So for each column, create a new column corresponding within Snowflake um, to that column. Then we're going to create a Snowflake hook here. Um, we're gonna snow get SQL Alchemy engine. So this is gonna create an engine for us to just write SQL or write code directly into, or SQL code directly into our Snowflake environment. 
We're then also going to set a staging table. So this is a staging table. So we're not gonna immediately bring in a prod. We're gonna bring in the staging and then eventually copy it over to in a prod once we're done transforming it. And then here with this connection engine, we are then going to create a temporary staging table. So creating this staging table based on the column definitions that we extracted, taking that data frame that we generated from the previous table and turning it into a SQL statement and depositing it into that staging table. Then we're going to create that table. So here we're going to create the cart target table. We're going to then perform an upsert using row hash comparison. This is where it's going to check, uh, making sure, hey, none of these rows already exist. And a row hash, the only reason we're doing that is just it's a little bit more computationally efficient. You could also just check and say, hey, nothing that was updated uh, before this. So you don't need to get this complex. I just thought it was a cool example and wanted to include it. But you could also probably get by with just a simple, hey, check for date time, make sure that nothing uh, in here it was created after, you know, at that point of change that we defined earlier in the DAG. Then, so we're gonna match update target row hash equals, so it doesn't equal any row hash of that same row. Then we're gonna update it. If they're not matched, then insert a new value rather than just updating. So if they are equal to the same, if a row already exists for this type of data, then we're just gonna update it. If not, we're gonna insert a new record here. Then we're going to connect, execute all that SQL statement that we just wrote out and then update our metadata with the latest timestamp. So this big block of text is really just collecting, hey, when was the last time we ran this DAG? Save that within Snowflake so that we then have that for comparison the next time we wanna run this DAG. So a lot of complex SQL statements, but very simple in that all we're doing here is just getting the data from our previous task, getting the shape of that table that we're creating, creating the table within Snowflake, then uploading all of our data into Snowflake, checking to make sure if it exists, just update that record. If it doesn't exist, create a totally new record. Then the last thing we need to do to put this all together is create a table list, discover tables. Then from there, we're basically using the dot expand method. So the rest of this DAG is going to run in parallel each table is going to be its own task instance. So here you get the benefit of using Airflow for it. You know, you're using map task instances, so you just write, define the task once, and then it'll run for every single table that you're extracting in parallel. So that's all I got for you. You know, Just a really quick, easy uh, way that you can use to extract data from Microsoft SQL Server in bulk, bring it into Snowflake. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.